Hi, my name is Jonathan Keith, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a scene where I've got a bunch of elements that are a very different sort of relative scale and bring them into some kind of accordance with each other. So uh, this will very often happen to you when you're importing models from the internet or you've been, for example, just sort of like modeling without a strong care about the size of the objects that you're making and you bring them in from a bunch of different scenes and you discover, oh no, they're all the wrong size. So uh, I'm gonna go over some techniques uh, First, just sort of eyeballing, and then uh, some more sort of detailed techniques for how to approach getting these to be the same size. So the first thing that you can do is just to sort of eyeball it. And generally you wanna pick the, you know, sort of like the object that is the most important object in your scene and use that as sort of the anchor or if most of your objects are already in, in sort of agreement in terms of their scale and only a couple of them are the odd fits, well, then just play with the, the couple that are the odd fits. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna get my chair here um, and sort of just spread all of these away from each other a little bit. And the easiest way to do that I've found is to use the place tool. So I'm just gonna grab my chair, I'm gonna place it over here to the side. I'm gonna take my orange, sort of place it over here to the side. And I'm gonna use my figure object as my sort of anchor point here. Now, if I click on the chair with my place tool and try and drag this around, what we'll find is that I'm actually moving the seat. And that's because the place tool um, doesn't know which of the objects in a hierarchy you wanna play with. So I'm just gonna grab the topmost object in my hierarchy, the chair there, and click and drag around. And I want to now scale this down. And the place tool offers this scale handle that will take all of these objects and scale them down to size. And if I look at the coordinates of my object, uh, we don't see any changes here in terms of scale. So that means it's actually going in and manipulating the properties of our objects to, to get things to be the appropriate sort of smaller size here. And I'm gonna just sort of use a rule of thumb that I'm inventing, which is that the seat of a chair should probably align roughly with uh, your character's knees or shin. Uh, now, that's not always true. If you're a, a shorter person, you might have a lot of experience with your, uh, your legs sort of dangling off a chair, or if you're a, a taller person, you might have the opposite experience of your, your knees being shoved up to your chest on that uh, coach airline flight. So. Just by taking this object and grabbing that handle, I've sort of manipulated the scale and gotten something that looks pretty good. Now you can use your place tool for this. You can also, if you'd prefer, just use the regular scale tool. So I'm gonna grab my uh, model mode, grab my scale tool and grab my orange here. And I wanna go into a view where I can see my object next to my sort of hero object or sort of my anchor object for scale. And the figure is a pretty good one. So I'm gonna scale that down and move my orange into the hand of my character, uh, maybe scale it down some more and place it. And we now have uh, objects that are all pretty reasonably scaled. They're all in pretty good accordance with each other. Now there is a chance, and I'm just gonna do this um, just for sort of show, that all of your objects have a good relative scale, but compared to real world objects, they're, they're quite off. And I find that uh, a really good sort of reference object is this figure right here. It defaults to about 180 centimeters, which is probably, you know, 10 or 15 centimeters taller than the typical person. Uh, but this does at least give you, I guess, sort of the, you know, a, a fairly tall person. Um, and uh, this can be a relative scale. So just adding a figure object to your scene gives you a good sense of, uh, you know, person size. And then you can grab your elements and scale them up together until you've got something that is, you know, a good relative size to the figure. Now we're kind of cheating here because we have an actual figure object that's the same object that we're sort of using for comparison. Uh, but as you can see, you sort of eyeballing it, you get pretty close, but it's not an exact match. And that's sort of the um, the challenge with the sort of eyeballing relative scale method is that over time, the little errors sort of start to compound and everything just seems a little bit off, but it's the fastest way to get things into sort of accordance with each other. Now, there's another way that you could approach this, and I'm gonna just sort of revert to saved here. 
or um, revert to saved. And we can uh, scale things based on our knowledge of the real world. Um, so I can, for example, grab this orange and I can adjust its radius uh, here. But say this is an imported model and you're not really clear on um, the, the size of it. So I'm just gonna copy this or cut it, control X, and I'm gonna drop it in a new scene. And this is sort of uh, a simulation of like importing an object from you don't know where, you don't know much about this, and you're not sure what the scale of it is or if that's correct. So in those situations, what I like to do is grab my coordinates manager. And your coordinates manager allows you to select an object and you can look at the size or you, there's this size plus option. And you know what, I'm actually, um, I'm gonna grab the chair as a better example of this. So the chair here is interesting because it's got a hierarchy of objects uh, that compose it and some of them are smaller than the whole. In fact, most of them are. But if you change your mode here from size, which currently gives a size of zero, zero, zero for this chair, it's because the null here has no size, but the seat, for example, does have a size. If you select this topmost object and change size to size plus, it's going to include all of your child objects as well in the size. And I like to use uh, world scale here, uh, at least for this, because there's a decent chance uh, that your axes are out of whack and you're not quite sure what, what they are. So for this, I now know that the height of my chair is 423 uh, centimeters. And a sometimes useful thing is to uh, pardon me while I grab a, a screen here. I'm going to go to ikea.com in a little guest tabs. Okay, so I'm just going to go to ikea.com. And yes, there are other furniture manufacturers in the world, uh, but uh, they make a lot of furniture. So I'm going to go to their US site and I'm going to search for chair. And uh, I'm going to look for one that sort of looks kind of similar. This one seems like a pretty good uh, bet. And what I can learn about this is the overall height. It says that it's 91 centimeters. And that gives me a good sort of uh, reference point here. So I can look at my chair and I see that it's 423.76 centimeters. And I can do the math, right? I think the math is like, uh, 423 times, uh, what was it? It was 91 point, 91 centimeters. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, there's math that can, that can be done. Uh, but, uh, if you don't want to have to take out a pen and paper and figure out the, that sort of algebraic equation, there's a simpler method. And what you can do is you can go to edit scale project. And this is why I copied this element into a new scene. So you want it in sort of uh, its own fresh scene so that you're not scaling the other elements, you're just scaling this one. So I'm going to choose scale project. And the current scale, I'm going to take this known measurement, the size on the y axis, which is 423.736. And I'm going to set that target scale to be equal to this value here, so 91 centimeters. And now we'll see it's scaling it by a factor of 0.215. And then I choose OK. And uh, the size relative to the, to the grid maybe has changed a little bit. And if I choose Reset Transform right here, it'll just sort of uh, reposition it to its sort of native position. And now I can copy this over into my main scene here and paste it. And we now see that the chair that I've pasted is significantly smaller than the chair that was here before. And it's a pretty good relative size to the figure. And if I want, I can do this same process again for my orange. Um, here, Google is our friend. Um, radius of an orange. Uh, and I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm just gonna go with the top uh, answer here from brainly.com, one and a half inches. So uh, in Cinema 4D, I see that my radius here is being measured in centimeters, but I have a, I've been given a value in inches, but a pretty cool thing that you can do is you can type in 1.5 and then type in I in, which is short for inches, and that conversion math will be done for you. So now I can take this orange 
and uh, go back to the other and paste. And uh, also, I, I love how absolutely certain that they were about the radius of an orange. It's one and a half, uh, one and a half inches. Uh, oranges are all sorts of sizes. Uh, if, if you've ever uh, grown an orange, you'll find that some are bigger than others, uh, some just freakishly large, some uh, much smaller than you want. Uh, but I guess one and a half is a good average size. So um, I guess you can decide from that point how big you want this to be. And this figure right here, 180 centimeters in height, we could look for uh, average human height in centimeters. Now there's some divergence depending on your, your gender generally. So let's, uh, let's say this is a woman uh, with a height of 163 centimeters. And now we will see what that looks like. And the chair is actually looking a little bit better relative to the figure now that we've got a more typical uh, size of a, of a person. So there you are. Those are a couple of techniques for how to scale objects relative to each other. I like to use the um, coordinates manager down here to get my initial sizes. It's generally pretty simple in terms of height, width, or whatever. If you're in a sort of a pickle and you only know the dimension of like one of these things, there's a couple tools over here. There's like the, the measuring construction and the guide tool. Measuring construction tool, uh, I'm assured that it works. I've seen tutorials, but it's, it's pretty complicated for the task. Uh, if you just wanna know like say the height of this uh, right here, what you can do is grab this guide tool and turn on snapping. So this sort of like magnet right here. And depending on your settings, hopefully with this sort of default settings, you'll get some point snapping here, which allows me to hover over the points of my object, draw a line, and we'll see that a new guide object gets created. And it's telling me the size of that portion of the chair It's 42 centimeters. And once I've got that measurement, I can just hit delete and I'm good to go. So that, uh, is a bunch of different techniques for getting objects into the same relative uh, scale. I guess I'm gonna close with one recommendation, which is that uh, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Uh, or another way of saying that, I guess, is if you model your objects to the appropriate scale and you are always working in accurate real world units, all of your objects are just guaranteed to fit well with each other. So that's my strong recommendation is to, from the beginning when you're modeling, to work in real world units so that no matter what scene you're working in, when you import something, you don't have to go through this process. But say you've imported a CAD model, uh, this is what you're gonna be doing. All right, have a good one.